Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to build a power pack for your Evo SS gimbal and your GoPro that can run the whole day without swapping any batteries. So I'd like to preface this video by saying that the original design for this was made by Keith from Goat Rides Bikes. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description for both his video and his website. So make sure you go ahead and check those out. At this point, I think we can all agree that gimbals have been great for mountain biking videos, and the Evo SS is probably amongst the best of them. While the Evo SS has great battery life for itself, the Hero 4 really doesn't. So it becomes a little bit of a nuisance to constantly have to change batteries when you're mid-ride. I usually go through two batteries and on longer days, sometimes even more. Now, Evo was super smart in building this little cable, which allows you to power the GoPro from the gimbal. Unfortunately, the battery life is great for itself, but when you're running the GoPro off the gimbal, the battery doesn't last that much, which usually means that through one ride, I have to change the batteries on the gimbal. So it seems pretty obvious, right? There's a USB port here that we can run an external battery pack into and just power this the whole day through without any issues. Unfortunately, Evo was not so smart in the sense that this USB port does not provide power to the gimbal. So we can't do that. Instead, we're gonna have to use all this stuff together with this to hack together a battery pack for this. So up to this point, we have battery for the GoPro solved. We said we were gonna use this cable, run it through the bottom, and plug it into this port right here. This port is gonna provide power from here to here and solves our issue for the Hero 4. Now, since we said we can input power in through the USB port, the only real option we have left is to try to find a way to get more power in through the batteries. Now, in order to do that, we have to understand how this actually works. So the first thing to do is to see how much voltage is going in there. Now we know we have two 3.7 volt batteries, but they can be connected either in series or in parallel. So that's something that we have to figure out. In order to figure that out, I've removed the batteries and I set my multimeter into continuity mode. Now, if you don't know what continuity mode is, it just means that when these two touch, it's gonna beep. The reason we want that is because we need to know if any two sides of this are a bridge or if they both go directly into the circuitry. So the first thing that we do is check each side of the battery terminals to see if we get a beep. When we test on this side, absolutely nothing. But when we test on this side, they beep. What that means is that this side right here is a bridge. So the batteries go in like this and the second one goes in like this. This side is just being bridged, which is the same thing as considering that the batteries were placed in this position. Since they're both placed in series, one after the other, we're actually getting the sum of the voltages of each. So 3.7 plus 3.7 is 7.4 volts. So what we know is that we need to get 7.4 volts in here. Thankfully, it just so happens that these battery packs for bike lights output exactly 7.4 volts, which is great for us because it means that we can use this to house the batteries that we need. Now, we get another obvious question at this point. What batteries do we put in here? I am using some NCR 18650B batteries. These are also lithium ion, just exactly as these, but they have almost four times the endurance. Now, if you wanna think about this in cycling terms to get a good analogy, the 3.7 volts per battery is how much power is being put down. And the 900 milliamp hours that this battery has is how much endurance the battery has. In comparison, this other battery is also 3.7 volts, but it has 3,400 milliamps. So we have almost four times the endurance off one of these batteries that we have off one of these. Now with lithium ion batteries, there's both good and bad in the market. Uh, I didn't use the same ones that Keith used in his video. I did a little bit more research and I found these that had a tiny bit more capacity, but you can go onto his site and he has a full list of everything and he's using ones that are slightly different. So do your own research and choose which ones you think are good. But for me, this, is, this have been great and I've tested them with other things and they last very long. So well, with our battery in there, and this is very conveniently marked, I don't know if it's visible from there, but you can see how the batteries are supposed to go in. You just screw the cap on. And this is really nice because this case in particular is super cheap. You can get it through Amazon or eBay or anything. And uh, once it's sealed, they're actually watertight. And it has a very convenient output using one of these connectors. This is one of the most common connectors that you find in older electronics. So in order to get this into this, we're gonna dig into that old drawer that everyone has that is full of old power outlets that you have no idea what they belong to. 
and we're going to cut one up and use it to actually put the power from this battery pack into the Evo SS. And this is where it gets a little bit hacky because up to this point we've been using all decent parts. But in order to do this, we're going to be using this wooden dowel. I'll get to it. I know it sounds weird. So after searching through the drawer of discarded power adapters, I found this. 5.5 millimeter connector on this side, which goes into this, which is exactly what we need, and the cigarette adapter on this side. I just cut them up, and now this is basically garbage for me right now, because we have these two loose cables, which is what we need on this side. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is peel a little bit of cable. I'm gonna use my teeth, but if you use your teeth and break them, not my fault. There's actually better tools to do this. I'm just being a little bit lazy at the moment. So now that we have these cables, I'm gonna roll them up a little bit just so that they don't flare out. So what we know at this point is that this has to be the positive and this has to be the negative. So we have to figure out which is the pos positive and which is the negative in this case. Again, we're gonna use the multimeter, but this time we're gonna put it in DC voltage. So DC voltage is direct current, which is what is used by batteries. And AC is alternating current, which is used by power outlets, like the one you have in your home. Basically, AC, never mess with. DC, it's okay to do some testing here and there. Still, you have to be careful not to touch anything while you're doing this because you can cause a short circuit. So what I'm doing right now is I put place my batteries in there. I turned on my battery pack. I tied one cable randomly to the red one, and now I'm just touching the other one here. And what I am getting, I don't know if you can see it in the secondary camera, is minus 7.8 volts. What that means is that I connected this the wrong way around, in the sense that if the red is the positive and the black is a negative for the multimeter, they're inverse in here. So now I know that this cable right here is the negative and this cable right here is the positive. In my case, very conveniently, it turns out that the black and white cable is positive and the all black cable is negative. We have the cables, we're gonna place them in here, but how do we actually get them to stay? We're gonna do that by using these wooden dowels. I am using a 5 eighths of an inch dowel. And what we're gonna do are build some dummy batteries like this one that we can just place in here. So we're gonna make these dummy batteries by cutting the wooden dowel to the correct length these batteries are called 18350, and the 350 means that, are, that they are 35 millimeters tall. So you can actually measure it or just grab your battery, place it here, and use a Sharpie to kind of measure it very close. I would recommend that you leave a little bit of free play because remember that you have springs here, and these springs are gonna help take up some of the space. The important thing is that when the battery's in, it fits snugly and it doesn't move. Now, obviously, to get the current into the battery, what we're gonna do is grab these little bolts, drill a hole into the top of the dowel, place the cable around this in this fashion, and then just bolt it in. And to make this even more hacky, I don't have power tools, so I'm actually gonna have to cut this, through this by hand. So I'm, I'm gonna skip through this part of the video because you don't wanna see me 10 minutes just doing this. And there we go. Dummy battery number one is made. As you can see, it's pretty close to the other one. It's not perfect, but it'll do. So now that I cut my two dummy batteries and I've test fit them and they work properly in there, I've gone ahead and I marked a little cross on top of them. And what the little cross is gonna help me do is find the center of it because I'm gonna drill a little hole on the top using this very exaggerated drill because I can't find my Dremel. So even when you're doing hacky stuff, if you're gonna use power tools, put on some eyewear, you don't wanna have a stupid accident doing this. Now, if you remember, I said that the black and white cable was gonna be my positive and the all black cable was gonna be my negative. So I'm actually gonna use a little bit of colored tape just to mark these to make sure that I remember which is which. That's an easier way of not making a mistake instead of writing something on the battery because this is very obvious. So I wrapped my two little dummy batteries in red and black tape so I can remember this is positive and this is negative. And then I placed a little piece of small red tape there so that I can remember exactly which one of the batteries go where. That way I know that this goes in the bottom and this goes in the top and it should be pretty easy. Uh, test fitment of the little lid says that this will work fine. Obviously, once we put in the cable, since the cable is gonna 
be like this, we're gonna have to cut a little notch into the side of the door here, but it's no big deal. Okay, so almost last step. I grabbed a little bolt and I placed it on top of the dummy battery and now I'm just gonna push it in almost all the way. Now like that, I'm leaving a tiny bit of space at the top and I am going to grab my black and white cable, which I said was the positive, and I am going to place it underneath that bolt to then hold it in position. So I'm placing that in there just like this. And then once that's in place, just grab it and tighten it down. And there we go. That's dummy battery number one, the positive one, all done. And voila, dummy batteries are made, negative, positive. So if we did everything correctly, and I hope we did because I like my gimbal very much, I just have to place the red one at the bottom. Remember I indicated it with a little piece of red tape. And this one right here. So that is how it looks with the batteries in place. Now I'm just gonna grab my connector. There is theoretically power to that. Power it on. And I should just have a gimbal that works right now. Fully operational power coming from the battery pack. Now, this beckons the obvious question. How long will this run? And at this point, I do not know. But don't worry, we're not gonna end the video right here. I'm not gonna show you how I'm gonna build my test rig because it's gonna be horrible and it's gonna take forever. But basically what I'm gonna do is I am going to leave this running in record mode uh, for as long as I can until this battery pack runs out of power and then I'm, I'm gonna show you what the results are. Once I have that, I'll have an idea of what the recording time is. And one thing that's important to remember is that the recording time isn't your writing time. Usually when you go out, you don't record every single second that you're doing. You kind of turn it off in the climbs, you get up and then you turn it on for the descents. Hopefully like that, we'll get a better idea if this can actually last us all day long. So this is my incredibly hacky yet effective test rig. I put it together using an oscillating fan. And uh, here's the other stuff that we built. The battery pack is right there and it's wired into the GoPro, which as you can see is being powered by the gimbal. So the idea behind this was to simulate more or less how much a gimbal would move when a rider is moving around. It's obviously slower, but I think it's good enough to get a solid test. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this recording basically until it runs out of battery. I charged everything up fully just before it, and once it's done, I'll let you know how long it lasted. So guys, it's been about four days since I started to do some testing on this and my initial tests were not that good. Truth be told, I was getting about five extra minutes compared to just regular battery. And uh, after having a few back and forth emails with Keith, he really helped me out. And uh, I thought that this could be the issue. And uh, since he agreed, I decided to go ahead and test it. See, the thing is that this cable is super skinny and uh, I changed it for this cable. It is a lot thicker. The thickness of the cable has an effect on the resistance that the current has to get through. And what we're thinking is that the current through the tiny little cable didn't power the gimbal enough to actually get the GoPro to work. So at this point, I'm getting some really good results. I put them up here on the screen. That's why I'm standing next to my black screen so you could see them while I was talking. But my best case, I actually got five hours of continuous recording, which means that for a regular day, you can go basically as long as you want. Also, make sure to go check out Keith's YouTube, Goat Rides Bikes, and his website. He was an instrumental part in designing this, so a big thanks to him. I'm placing a little link here so that you can get to his channel directly. Well, guys, see you for the next one. Happy riding.